Hey everybody, Sean Tanney here from theautomationschool.com and in this episode of The Automation Show, we're going to create our very first program for the Wago PLC we unboxed in a previous episode. And the first step will be to redeem our software, get that downloaded. Then we'll go in and we'll identify this controller on the network. We'll uh, create a new program and then we'll download it and test it out. So with that said, let's go over to the computer and redeem our license certificate. Okay, and if I look at this uh, license here, it's telling me to go to wago.com forward slash e-cockpit. So let's go ahead and do that. wago.com forward slash e-cockpit. All right, here we are. Now, register at no cost to evaluate eCockpit for 30 days. So I guess we can do that to download it. We do have a license, so we actually uh, can redeem it. But let's go ahead and fill in our information, and I'll be right back. Okay, now that I've submitted my uh, info, I can go ahead and download the software. It looks like this is going to take a couple of minutes, so I'll fast forward the video. Okay, it looks like it's done. So let me go to my downloads. Let me uh, show in folder here. I'll right click, I'll extract all. Okay, now it's done. Let me go ahead and run the setup here. I got a more info here, run anyways. Select English, okay. Next. I accept that agreement. I'm using it for professional purposes. We'll leave the default installation directory. Create a desktop shortcut and install. Yes, I really want to do this. And I'll skip the video ahead here. All right, now it's done. Let's click on finish. And we'll minimize, minimize. And we can see it starting up. Now I have a license, so I'm going to go ahead and enter it in. Otherwise, it would only work for 30 days. So let me go ahead and enter that in. And I'll go ahead and put this in, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I clicked on Add Licenses here, and it gave me this message. And I'm just going to say yes. And here it says the license has been activated. Good. And here you can see it's asking about automatic updates. I'll go ahead and click on yes. Now it's saying updates are available and I'll go ahead and click on display. Here we can see all the available add-ons and the available versions, but at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on back. And here I'm gonna go ahead and click on empty project. Okay, and this is the default screen you'll see here. And um, let me go ahead and look at the settings. We're going to go ahead and scan our network. And let's see what the settings are set up for. It's going to scan between 1 and 254. I know my uh, router is at 1, so I'm going to tell it to scan from 2. And I think this device was set up for 15. Last time I checked, on uh, it's set up for DHCP. So I'm just going to have it uh, scan between 2 and 30. Let's go ahead and apply that. We'll go ahead and do a scan. And it just found it there at 15. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. And now let's do a apply selection. Okay, it's giving me this warning about different versions and whatnot. I'm going to go ahead and add. Okay, another thing I want to do here is I actually want to scan for my I.O. cards here. So let's see if we can scan the controller itself. Okay, and it found them. Okay, I had my two digital in, two digital out, and my IO link master. That's excellent. So we're here in the device structure here. I'll just click on apply all. Oh, 
Okay, and now I'm going to come down here to Program Structure. You can see by default I get this PLC program. If I double click on it, you can see it opens up. I get some variables here, and then I have what you would consider, I would consider structured text, right? So I don't want to write a structured text program as my first program. So let me go ahead and right click here on application and add a new program organizational unit. And this is what we do in the Micro 800. And Logics is kind of similar to a, a program and in Siemens it would be like an OB. So let me go ahead and uh, click that. Okay, I'm just going to call it POU1. And it's a program. And I do not want structured text. You can see I also have sequential function chart available to me. Ladder logic, function block diagram. Now these are familiar to Alan Bradley users. But look at this. There's also something called a continuous function chart. Very interesting. But for our case, I like to start always start off with ladder logic. So let me go ahead and select ladder and then add. Okay, there's my variables and here's my ladder. But uh, something you'll notice here under task, right, is that by default, my POU1 isn't going to run. Now I could call it from the PLC Pro because you can see here that is going to run. But I don't even want to do that. I'm just going to add the POU1 here. So it automatically runs. There we go. All right, so with that done, let's go back to POU1. And we'll start here. We get some ladder elements down here. We'll start with a uh, contact. We'll drag it right there. Okay. We're going to need another contact. We'll put it here. Okay. We're going to need an output or a coil. Put it here. And then I'm going to want a parallel contact here for the ceiling. Okay. We'll put it right there. Excellent. And then I'm going to want another rung here. So I'm going to right click and do insert network below. And I'm going to say, we'll start with a negated contact here. And then I'll put another coil here. And this will make sense in a moment. But before I start putting the addresses in and assigning them to each of the instructions, what I'm going to do is actually go create some uh, tag names on my I.O. So let's go to the device structure down here. I'm going to double click on my DI generic input. Okay, and we can see that here. Let me go ahead and maximize the software. And um, if I look at the IO mapping here, and I'll open it up. You can see I got that diagnostics, but what I really want is the DI generic. Let's go right to there and open that one up. And here for the variables, I got the input 0 and input 1. Let me go ahead and give input 0 pb stop. And we'll make input 1 pb start. Okay, so those two are done. Let's go to the outputs. Open this up. Now I only got two in and two out. So I'm going to have, this is going to be a much simpler program than the last program we did for the last PLC. So we'll make this one m1 motor. And we'll make the next one m1 stopped so this one will come on when the motor is supposed to run and this will come on when the motor is not running so maybe to give us a big red led all right so let's go back to program structure here and we'll open our pou and here let's go ahead and choose the address for that we can see here we have two options io config globals right then I have IO config global mapping. And so we'll put the stop in first, followed by the start. Okay, we'll put the M1 motor in here. Now, typically, I'd want to seal it in with the uh, contacts from the motor starter, right? The auxiliary contacts in case the heater blows and, you know, or the contact trips. I know that. Um, that the mode is not running anymore, right? Um, but in this case, I can't do that. So I'm just going to, because I don't have enough I.O. So I'm going to go ahead and just put the M1 motor here as well as my seal in. Let's see here. Okay. And now I'm going to use, I got one more output to use. So I'm going to use it as my stoplight. Okay. 
and then I will trigger that when the motor is not running. Excellent. So that's looking good. Um, you know, so far I think everything's good. So why don't we see about, uh, well, first, let's see if we can save it. Save as. We'll put it in my documents and I'll call it Rogue One. Excellent. You always want to save early and save often. <laughs> and then we'll go to, let's see here, network. How do I download? Program? Okay. Well, maybe I should try to connect to the controller first. I'll click on connect. Says it's connecting. And I get an error. Look what it says right here. My controller is not set to E runtime. Okay, now this is tricky. If you've never used Wago before, you probably wouldn't know this. And you can see this error message that comes up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to uh, our web browser. I'm going to uh, connect to the controller here. I think I said it was 15. Advance, proceed. Okay, and we're going to click on PLC Runtime, and it wants me to log in now. If you've never used Wago before, the default username and password is admin and Wago, all lowercase, submit. You can see here it's telling me, hey, that's the default password. You should really change that. I'm not going to change it because I'm not going to remember. Um, so here you can see that by default it's set up for CodeSys 2, right? But we want it to be e runtime according to the e cockpit software. So let me select the e runtime and let me hit submit. Okay, so that's done. So let's go back to the software. Okay, we'll close that. Let's try this uh, disconnect, reconnect. Let's see what happens this time. Ooh, this looks much better. Now it's saying I need the username and password again. So let's try admin and Wago again. It says, hey, your application does not exist on the device. Do you want to create it and download? Let's do it. Okay, we're online with the controller. You can see what's going on here. So let's go out to the field. And we can see that right now we have no lights because the system is not in the run mode. So let's go ahead and put it in the run mode. And instantly you can see that this light right here came on because our motor is not running. So let's see, our stop is off. Let's turn our stop on. Oh, you can see it there. The stop is on. Now I'm going to hold the start on. You can see the output came on, the stop light went off, and you can see the ceiling came on. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn the start off. You can see the ceiling keeps it in, right? Exactly what we would expect the PLC to do. And if to turn the stop off, if I push in my, uh, my normally closed uh, push button, you can see it drops out the rung and our stop light comes back on. So this time I'll just do the, uh, I'll hit, uh, release the stop button and I'll just momentarily uh, pulse the stop button. And you can see that uh, it worked again. Everything's working great. I'll stop it. And that's it. That's how easy it is to program a Wago PLC for the first time. Now, there were a couple of tricks in there, right? So getting the software, right? Learning how to do that. And then once the software is installed, um, learning how to scan for the controller and for its I.O., right? I mean, you could add uh, all that stuff manually, but if you have the hardware here, why not scan for it? And then um, making sure the controller's runtime is not CodeSys, but e-runtime. So that's important. And then knowing what the default password is, that's important too, because if you don't know admin Wago, then you wouldn't be able to do much of what we did. So with that, that is how easy it is to, to program a Wago PLC. We hope to do many more programs in Wago in the future, including using the IO link module that they sent us. We really appreciate that. Uh, but for now, we're going to leave the show at that. I want to uh, thank again the good folks at Wago for sending it over and also thank our patrons who uh, support the site over at patreon.com forward slash automation. And uh, with a small monthly pledge, they get free downloads, uh, ad free articles and more. And uh, in addition to that, I want to let you know, if you know anybody looking for automation training, have them check out where I work full time over at theautomationschool.com. And with that, 
That's it for this week's episode. I hope you're all doing great. I want to wish you a very safe, healthy, and happy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.